My heart is pounding. The darkness is now quickly surrounding. My battle has started, the fanfare starts sounding. This is a matter to which I most definitely have no choice but to attend. A contortionist, deploring a terrible stories for extortionists. Is there more of this? I will send cancer like that to the deep abyss. A detention of course for this, a small infinity nearly blissed. And you just missed being permanently dismissed, for your transgressions, for that is why they call us, the unknown missed. To confuse the track list, no tax have been missed, my ultimate failure to connect to the portions for this. A tormented extension, a content retention. We will not sit by while it's subject to mention. Intention is not worth the mentioning, if it has no lessons and emotional pouring, more boring than plain porridge that just came out of a holiday sorting, an on-demand story on it about the touring man and glory. Glint's reflecting, several strange colors begin collecting. The echoes of voices are calling for protection. Listening to me, no one will ever see, in the empty sea from which they want to be free. They go clackety clack like the cheapest pen I decree. Attention. This lesson is 10. Hear me hear me, no more sessions till then. Before your pension is pending on thee, no players will listen, do not try to flee, no attention will be directed towards you or your clone extensions, I'm sure there are few to mention. Do not go on any expedition. Your judgment will now be, a new future for both of your beings. If you do not listen to us, it seems. Your dreams are of darkness, we all hear the scream. So before we go to too far an extreme, we shall deliver upon you, your fixed space time seam. We will make, the final decision. The council can no longer take your poisonous stake foretold, no more control of the entry holds, not to mention the twenty time mistake folds, the space for your world has been sold, for our upcoming war of us all and we cannot know about the energy generator at all. One of them stops. I do not know if the furnaces were clean or not. I tried testing it, it was certainly not hot. I can't even use it on my player's top. Their spectacles, made from energy of top. I was told that I could not. But, they were actually good. So I stopped. So how's this shop that supposedly has hood prop? I say, by the way of top. You will never know the things I've thought. Behind my friend's brain, it's like a master lock. His stains are from his clock. Which he can manipulate from beginning, until time stops. His thoughts may be strained more than it first seems. But he has the decision making ability of kings. No drop will ever happen that cannot be, or maybe you are blind in the abyss of thee. I've told you again why I have to see, or it will never stop to be, back to me. And if you listen, carefully, I will show you how it went, us three. I shall start my story with the very first deed. I would like you to focus your attention please, Mr. Hookhand. A terrible person, with special demands. He insults everyone he sees on sea, or land. Sometimes his brain goes poppity pop, and you can tell his brain needs an oil change at the shop. But the officials claim that his record is not tame enough to cook a universe in the top of the tops, but why should we stop? Is there truly a reason to hold this from going into a deep drop? Is it the eternal rain? Yes, yes it is, again. A grey frame to overlook the lessons of universal pain. Would you not agree, this the most perfect of weather, is that of the rain? The true shame isn't laid out before your brain, and you claim to know that a man that has excessively trained, a brain cell like a soldier, of fortuitous war fame? Famous hell. Other than a judgment administered, much too hastily a decision is sinister. A downward gaze occurring every day, from this wretched draped frame. Every place he continues to fade, a truly rare claim for the world of sane. And you can also claim, a free token at the universe of knowing. No mains will be until we get this memory acknowledged. A quick question about this man's head map, the one with the large poison trap. Is thy brain on tap? He thinks he can pour it on his pancakes like sap. A valve directly to the cells and memories, created by a collapsed universe no longer in need. You may think it humorous to behold, but why should I not get two taps, one hot, one cold? He can't understand though, his brain cells are insane. 
every particle that exists a new change, and in the darkness, for example, an ancient Chinese market man, new stand plans that cover all the processes you could ever think in your brain, not even the wide open plans could possibly contain, all the information from the thoughts of the trained. A darkened conscious could not feel, a wish to not exist, it cannot be revealed, a truth expected from the cloudy tense form, a new scene, no ephemeral mind existing and not formed. I remember the sun in the desert oasis, these memories are shapeless, remembered in small amounts of traces. Particles of these, not worth recovering with the power I need, they don't have any goods that are pleasures for a humble sentient, that is me, I've seen this many times as I've seen. No way to measure, no way to meter. I suppose an existence can rarely, be that type of feature. A humble throne will topple anyway. A quickly developing one needs a leader to stay. There is truly one way, to not be in existence. Thoughts forever lost to infinite dimensions. Eternity. Expanding forever into nothing. You could act surprised. I've watched time go forever with my own eyes. You were told the rules, we have to uphold. To violate these is quite the act to behold. I must dive now into the nothingness of creation. A new world awaits my own formation, but everyone knows what I need, for all of creation this item proceeds. A taking of consciousness, an ingredient, it has been decreed. I am a memory poorly gathered. You can say that my moment hardly mattered. Every lesson I've learned, I've been hard tattered, they never survive as a piece of me, a reality that only stems beliefs. Ideas left to the aging dreams, a feeling of fleeting, we must be careful with our diffusion, the final facing of faceless illusions, with no more confusion. We shall soon come, the end conclusion, a beautiful last cloud to see, further and further they have departed from me, and I'm left stagnant and stunned without. No longer doubt, these intrusions all throughout, and I feel true madness, the last stand on emptiness starts its clashes, the destruction, a world trapped in me, and I no longer need, my sensory. I also proclaim my release of extensions, this final account, to the furthest detention. But I can also see, this construction I no longer need, all of infinity, a teacher to me. But do I perhaps have a final deed? Maybe now that the top is upon me, I hide all of my reflections, the pale weak chains are what makes the connections. Is this a true power, that has come to my attention? Well, chasing down these rejections, I think I see now, a true recollection. No understanding words can be loyal with this disconnection. But, this does not seem like this is entering an ageless complexion, more grand than the majestic distortions. For what is a foolish puppeteer, with no physical forces? Ignorant spouting. The rhetoric of choruses, I could hear the chimes a wave truly shining, a dying star release, the light more than blinding, a forceful phase of movement confusion, the erasing of a simple fleshy contusion. No more a movement of the four planes, gone from this time frame, I say in our name. And once again, the creation of first flame, well, a ridiculous petty use of an unlimited tool. A domed state, with poor rules. I declare that this man knew, he considered his actions thoroughly and through, for that, he is surely a fool, perhaps, an image of what could be used, an effigy adhesion that will no longer fuse, we have created new man from nothing. Choices will be made from loving or suffering, a test for the ages, of ghostly vice. I wonder if he is disgusting, or will turn out to be nice. Upon my introspection I clearly realize, my story is nothing. But in this moral conclusion, we cannot let loose, any undue suffering. The evidence shows we actually have quite something, a true scar across all the strange stars, that float on the fields and static quite charged, I can finally see this and this state of energy. A story that I can change and amend. This new friend of mine, that I shall send, he will reach the darkness before it ends. Towards the outreaches, and past the furthest reaches, he shall attend. Occupancy of space we have shed, a broken new song forms gracefully in its stead. Knowledge I gain anew, a duality of choice is no longer renewed. Ah, life, our pull in every direction is prolonged. To what do we belong, 
when our personalities are only as clear as night fog. Torrential storm cursed land we may never see dawn. A calling, echoing, that make up our song. Our war drums leave us to roam our world with no one along, an impossible force that defies the laws. Upon old strains, thought can be severed of use. A face, a place, flowers bloom, firing of electric pulse our brain begin to ruin, an art form non-conforming, strange chemical reactions start to evolve. What did our ancestors think, did life turn out how they planned it? We fall in and out of different states of consciousness. We lose control and our panic is automatic, the dark mythical places that we hold, we will never be remembered by those. Our evidence shows us how many people are true, we die our ashes will be gone. One final review. I wouldn't assume. Would you? Upon all chances are darkness and gloom. We evade ourselves this is our doom. The last of our memories the void will soon consume, away with the small confines of the starkened room. For now we will look at a live world, how many iterations do you think this one will hold? I see the dead are peddling their gold rice patties, I'm taking those pictures, severely contrasting. I will demand. It's not like I can, stand on my head and count backwards while I'm running from the darkness within. And now we see that the hood wars begin, against the hood players and the dead walking demons. I sense something strange, about this place we observe. How can the dead be commanding their servants? Zombies and the feds, two times one in the ghetto. I would probably say that this war will be going to the strategy table. No fable I have ever heard has been burdening enough on my mind spurs. I've cured many with this deadly disease and still there is undead service. Maybe they will learn the way to win is to burn it. Look at this. No one cared about my dead, he'd be crazy in the head and thought that his lies gave him street credit. But no one ever disrespects anything he ever said, he has a PhD and earned it while eating a chicory soup in front of the Great Freeze. He also sneezes in it, quite a foul man, but he could be of service. His famous soup made of dreams, will give convulsions and seizures to dead things, and while he's dreaming, even though no idea he ever had was worth keeping. He still think he can be teaching. But they also say dead god dad stank. This is what happens when you think that your clothes always clean. To extrapolate, dead spilled the beans, cheese on his jeans. He has done multiple things, to make him a very unclean mean. And a effel example for his fellow beings. And dead also hears the dead from a payphone illusory, that is just a stick in his head. He once even picked up a radio with his knees, even though he got two of these, receptor metal spleens. Most certainly one of the craziest people we have ever seen. He once thought on top of a building that he could fly like a plane. Did I also mention Johnny Boy? He weigh two tons and the doctors say he should be dead before he is 30. But he keeps getting up every day and drinking his radioactive lemonade. His taste is the way he earns his top street credits. He don't even have to move from his bed to get his famous feelings of dread from the pedestrians that he makes fun of are not too upset. And when Mr. Hook Hands rises from the earth, he and his followers are going to all be first. He rides a spacecraft that looks like a hearse but he hurts and his brain aches get on his nerves. He's nervous because his turn list turns over in his head, a literal graveyard for his thoughts have already been set. He also cannot learn very well. So he just acts angry with his huge unibrow. When Mr. Hook Hands starts his morning chugging, you will see that he is pretty ugly. I'd rather look at an old mop bucket. His chains on his windows tell he can be a really dumb guy. He has bars everywhere but he leaves the key in the front door all the time. One time Hook Hands tried to use mustard and moldy grease for his snack creation. Let me just say that his face has never been the same after it. I really can't express how awful Mr. Hook Hands truly is. He seriously tried to make a new hand with sausage sticks. The only thing that Hook Hands is good for is hitting his targets, like a disk that goes in the computer but the data amount is corrupt and retarded. It kind of looks like he tried to cook bacon at the local flea market. But now instead of making fun of stupid old Hook Hands, we can go back to the war with the dead on land. Also. The zombies are rich somehow and paid for the Federals to go after them. They even paid for a presidential campaign. 
you can pretty much say that this world is the opposite of what you would think, with the people all living in ghetto boxes. One thing I do have to mention about this world for sure is that their shanks are all sharp, because they are made from the bones of boars. Custom departments sell them apartments, but they are all jobless because the zombies are the main populace. Is there truly a king of the non-zombie ghetto now? No frowning stories could drown the true crown of a dilapidated survivor town. And suddenly these people got swords from the blacksmith in the town, but they found their weapons cooled and cut hash browns. It seems that the zombies have won the new crown, a confused town of the dead will now be drowned. Because the whole town is under the Arctic Ocean now. Because I say it's going down. One mortal is out in the sun with a plow on his underwater farm for fun. When he is stunned because he realizes that not breathing, and that is not fun. He turns to run but he is four miles under the ocean sun. How did he know this? You may question me. I've just decided that's what would happen to him. All of a sudden every skinny white person in this town starts having glowing eyes. Tutanjani radioactive soup has been given to them in the form of porridge. From their minds come a powerful beam of telepathic pork cobbin list. In their brain compartment their radioactiveness startles them. They store their life stories in this boring ocean bank vault made of sand, nine stories, and they are stranded but they have their energy, and that is the moral of the story. These retarded skinny people will rise from the water and take over the moorings, of the ships Vikings used so they can go exploring in the year 222. Won't nice. A clearing sail is kind of like that brain sap on the pancake story. A clammy handed old hermit can't stand on the shores with me. He tries to reach for his knife, but he has no energy storage, unlike most other people that came from the ocean story. Besides, everyone in the skinny radioactive people villages start to ignore him. He tries pouring boiling water on himself in the morning. And through this crazy prion water that messes up his DNA and proteins he starts to become a crazy strong superpowered old fart. He has strings that allow him to remotely access bean cans. His signature weapon comes from his core strings. He is the true puppeteer dark shadow man forming. And while everyone sees the shadows forming, it's actually the skinny radioactive people from the ocean releasing their telepathic energy storage. They also sometimes power radioactive power stories. And the old fart that's now the dark puppeteer starts to cheer like no one can hear, so they direct some of their mass-produced radioactivity super beams straight into his ancient hearing aid ears. The old man appears that he wants to fight. He turns around and the strings from his fingers get him completely tangled around, so a radioactive person cooks him until he turns into a giant cookie, then they threw him into the Mariana Trench. Yes, he was a cookie but he could still bitch. Some of the stupid skinny radioactive people start touring offshoring bank law earring old fart with a mustache in a concorny circus video games in the mornings. Then they all flush themselves down an oversized toilet drain. Some people watched from the grandstands as the zombies that had basically taken over all the land made their final demand. Well they almost say that they are going to demand something, then they all get running, and they start to form into a super attack helicopter that's over 30 stories. But honestly, they could have done a way better job, as soon as they look over, they see a mob. It's the stupid skinny radioactive people. How did this battle suddenly turn so evil? But their attack was only to shoot out a grain of sand. The dumb radioactive people started trying to drive cars on land, but they forgot that they couldn't even start to understand. They started flooring off a cliff at the highest end. A giant pile of bodies started to make a nuclear volcano indent. And all of a sudden there were like a million bodies in the Grand Canyon where they were all stupidly driving off the side. And they all blew up and that whole area ceased to exist, but over the clouds came a big band, playing with popcorn trumpets like it's the 1930s. All the skinny radioactive people that were left alive were standing around. Their ears became clogged with dirt by the pound, this must have taken place somewhere in a downtown area like Chicago. At 3.30, all of the shirt stores have fully ignored the zombie wars, as long as they keep all of their doors. They don't care what happens to the world of course. They curse all of those who exist, 
They don't even care about selling their clothes. What a bunch of assholes. But back to my two-ton radioactive boy Johnny, he is starting to clutch his stomach because he feel funny. Oh wait, what is this? He is summoning his ultimate attack that looks like a floating pickle with ranch dip. But this trick isn't a joke, he reels his more energy than he could ever come up with his curse. He absorbed a million times the radiation than any other hoe. His left toe hurts and he derps so his attack fails and he just messes up his huge final attack that was going to blast the last enemy which were the feds. But his ultimate radioactive attack starts to work even though he messed up and it dropped in the dirt. What happened was, his divine shirts reflected some of the energy from being made into a food can. To be fed to the people in the grandstands. Yes. There are still skinny radioactive people in these huge grandstands wanting to watch the apocalypse. He can't stand up like a normal man. Ah oh shit, he is starting to fall over. It's like a building that falls with 50 million floors. Every shop door is tore from where they were, 55 quadrillion tons of TNT. Strip the earth of every dust pee every single thing in the vicinity is evaporated. And not even a bacteria or flea can be existing independently. No longer can anything exist in the entirety. Because of this. The last thought from consciousness ends and they just collapse the whole universe into a bin can. No system, or cataclysm, will ever exist in this universe again. A tamer ending than the radioactive attack plan. No lessons will be taught to any man, silent are the curses, no darkness or light for any person and you wouldn't even understand how big Johnny Boy was anyway. He was at least 4,000 pounds of pure energy. More than anyone in multiverse history. This is the end, of all energy that there ever has been, in this universe plan. No one left to plea except of course. But the outer space players that come from planet the fourth. Of course the. Hear ye, hear ye. They sign a new treaty with their zombie friends that reached escape velocity and turned into bands of frequencies. They have escaped the spatial dimensions with their stupid cheating plan. Oh yeah, that old guy that was turned into a cook? That can pick up radio with his knees tunes into Outer Space Station 103. And everyone else from the skinny non-existent radioactive people village underwater in the story, ends up on Mars to the start of another story in another universe. Oh great, look at this, an old granny. From this new apartment. She lives on Mars has an overdue bill for her favorite protein bars made of Mars dust and tar. Her tartar could start a new Star Wars, she's a far tar that could release more energy than a star. She is the new star of the story so far, she's on par with two-ton Johnny boy that is living in another universe somewhere and he just started absorbing planets because he is so huge. Also he became some kind of radioactive Jedi or whatever in space and he is so huge he doesn't need to breathe. The two-ton guy doesn't like having the force, because his radioactive powers make his voice hoarse, he tells all his followers of course but they are just too bored to make a new announcement to the planet stores. He starts asking for people to bring him a pizza with full toppings of every flavor, but no one will listen because he looks weird. Yeah there is something about those new stores on Mars, they are far apart and the granny that live in the apartments there can't breathe in an atmosphere they didn't evolve in to start with. So all the old people on Mars start to fart and they literally ignite the whole planet into a star. Whoops. That one old lady managed to escape by becoming a swarm of space bees and flying into space, some skinny radioactives that lived under the ocean, don't even have to breathe but instead set up an arcade that everyone on the new different Mars has to pay tax fees, and now everyone wants to be free of the taxes, they want to be free from this new Mars market action. The system is flawed, they decree. And they want to start over like when the glaciers first thought and they also don't like bins. Another granny was smart and she froze a can of pure darkness in the new Mars frozen cab department. She laughed an evil laugh. I don't even know how this is allowed to happen but it just did. And not saying this person is too smart in the brain department. She started to have a thought but all she can think of is hers inner charkas. It's that old granny that's actually a swarm of bees.
she focuses all of his energies to destroy the free markets that have plagued new Marses. But in her final steps she couldn't hold in a fart, she cooled and finished the final attack plans. She gets out that evil kin of darkness, is released upon the world like sharp markers in a cauldron of charters, boiled at two trillion degrees for hours. Everyone tries to sell their brains, because they realize the universe is done for anyway and the prices are high in the brain selling markets. Oh but wait a second dot it was the zombies plan all along. They knew all about the free market scams, they executed their entire list since they started. And no one will ever know the old bee granny as a martyr. No one understands the zombies ultimate plan now, or how they multiplied again so rapidly in this universe, the technology of the special zombie version of a farm plow will never be known again in the world of no house. Because they would rather take that technology with them for all of the universe life service. But there is still one stupid radioactive skinny person that lived in the ocean, and from him drifting in outer space we can be begin a new story version. While he out there he gets some alien school or whatever, his brain cells feel like they are burning, might as well get some spices before the zombies can discern what who he is. They may be looking for him but has turned into radio frequency surgeon, this is the ultimate place in the universe for him to be sure of. He is now observant of the energy of the surface of existing universe service, and that two-ton Johnny person was actually above all the rest, he was the best and created the whole universe from a fart. He didn't even care he was just bored, made the whole world just by an accident with a radioactive power he had in himself stored. So he is literal like a giant balloon with a universe in him. And he has to eat other universes for lunch, he can't be sure because he never knew what he existed for. So he learns about his own service, and starts to try and shrink to a normal size. Then he makes his own floating space book service, now stardust but will eventually reach a point when it bands together again, but the two-ton Johnny person doesn't even understand his own rules that he made up in his own universe that he somehow shrunk himself back down in. Maybe next time he will create a species of sentient space bees, they will share all of their markets freely, and will be more numerous than, than the grains of sands on every planet for eternity. One Playa lets out a screech in a blank universe. His voice was the first vibration that caused a broken TV on the new earth that is controlled by his stupid creative service. The two-ton fat dude, who cans is now his right wingman on the Triga, and the dumbest person that ever lived. They start a new universe, all of its inhabitants are simply clones with unfashionable clothes, and all of their bones are made from stone. They have miniature clones in their folds making all the decisions from provoking song words. And in this universe someone burns a piece of toast with just their words. They say has the greatest rapper in the multiverse, his rhymes carry the creation of worlds. Every letter is a lesson to be learned. Even though he might be dumber than hooked hands, and he doesn't know anything about songwriting. He eventually wrote a book made out of pieces of disgusting trash that was burning. Nobody ever learned that the old space bee hybrid grandma in her almighty house of pieces of shrines to the moon, and the two-ton Johnny fat dude, he finally used all his radioactive power, when he tried to make a divine potato in his crazy universe furnace, that he stole from the creators of the universes. How could he burn this? The other two asked while they phoned the universe call service. They will soon learn that the holograms they flourish, we had no code for an interactive divine furnace. So a bug destroyed all of creation of retarded Jana's place good, they will never mourn the universe that was born. No other service that Johnny could get on the cable box service, alerts a fatal universe burn list. But he tried to be an earnest person that had more money than was ever supposed to show up in the world was burned in a regular furnace that was slightly radioactive with all of his burdens. He didn't know that what he was burning was cursed. He felt the spell unleashed electrify all his nerves. Now every time he feels like turning on his house furnace, he starts burning. Flames spout from his eyes and radiation cooks everything around him like a microwave from hell. Who cans goes to school to learn, to never turn on a furnace, they all must learn this because if it happens that's the end of their universe service, they live every day without a chore list. All of them on this new planet are old people that have diabetes service, 
They eat like they ignoring the divine plan that Tu Tunjani gave them when he made a bunch of universes. So Tu Tunjani heats up their whole planet in his new radioactive burnless. It's a stove that can cook to 10 million digits of energy mergers. So the hook hands calls his omniverse electric service. They say he is getting it turned off for his bills behind by several shore lists. So when Hook Hands heard this, he also burned his universe with the two ton Johnny plan. But what happened to Hook Hands part in making a new universe porridge? You see that's where the story gets a new intersetting plot twist, or a lot of them. See Captain Hook is sailing in the nothingness before anything existed, void of the multiverse and he is ultra drunk on alcohol biscuits that he somehow made exist. He couldn't give a shit if he is missing anything that ever could be existing. He calls the multiverse helpline and complains that he is bored surely. He says that his stupid universe furnace won't even do what he paid for surely. They tell him why don't they just go back to the start of the story. And that's how we end. An endless story that just repeats forever and that's the end of the story. Wow, thanks retarded hook hands, repeats. Wow. Thanks retarded hook hands.